Hey guys, I'm Scarfy, and welcome to Subwoofer Entertainment Treehouse. Usually we begin with the song right at the beginning as a countdown to get ready to, ready for the show, but today we're going to shake things up a bit. This week has been a very confusing week for all of us, where, where our minds go one way and our actions go another way. And sometimes things don't always go the way we intended to go, and I know a lot of people are confused and lost. But we have a song here from one of the greatest cartoon shows imaginable on Cartoon Network. Steven Universe. Now, some of you may, well, some of you may be aware of Steven Universe and some of you don't, but it has tackled many issues in our society that is currently going on right now. The stuff it tackles includes intimacy, gender identification, puberty, sex, child to adulthood, etc. But through clever writing, it has become one of the most well-known, beloved shows. And we thought that this song is, above all, I think, what everyone needs to listen to. So we're going to do an exercise here. And in the voice of Garnet, I'm going to encourage all of you on the chat, as well as my wolf brothers. Close your eyes. Breathe. Here in darkness, everything's OK. Listen to the waves and let them fade away. Here comes the thought. Here comes the thought. Oh. Take a moment to think of just flexibility, love, and trust. Take a moment to think of just flexibility, love, and trust. Here comes the thought that might alarm you. What someone say? And how it harmed you Something you did That felt to be charming Things that you say Are suddenly swarming And oh, you're losing sight You're losing touch All these little things Seem to matter so much That they confuse you that Take a moment, remind yourself to Take a moment and find yourself Take a moment to ask yourself If this is how we fall apart But it's not, but it's not, but it's not, but it's not, but it's not It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay You got nothing, got nothing, got nothing, got nothing to fear a thought that might alarm me what someone said and how it harmed me something i did it failed to be charming things that i said are suddenly swarming and no oh, i'm losing sight i'm losing touch all these little things seem to me Take a moment and ask yourself if this is how we fall apart. But it's not, but it's not, but it's not, but it's not, but it's not. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I've got nothing, got nothing, got nothing, got nothing to fear. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And it was just a thought, just a thought, just a thought, just a thought, just a thought. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. We can watch, we can watch, we can watch, we can watch them go by. From here, from here, from here. Take a moment to think of trust, flexibility, love, and trust. Take a moment to think of trust, flexibility, love, and trust. Hey guys, hey guys, I'm Scarfy. I'm Naka. And I'm Cruz. 
And welcome to Subwoofer Entertainment Treehouse, a determinedly drunk, geeky, and cheerful podcast for wolves. We house in a tree and we entertain, bringing you all the latest entertainment news. So that's a lot like a music appreciation class. We talk about certain topics and see how people react to them in certain ways. That song that you were listening to was Here Comes the Thought from Steven Universe. In my opinion, I think that is the, the song that we needed for this week that we needed to listen to because there's a lot of a lot of stuff going about us this week. And um, I, I do have something to read. Before I turn it over to our original agenda, I have an announcement to make. It has been a very long, hard, rough, tiring, and above all, stressful week on all of us here this past week for set. And no doubt for you folks as well following the election. While it's left us drained, we're going to keep powering through. So with that being said, I'd like to take some advice from a, from a dear friend of ours. No matter what race, religion, gender, sexuality, or any of those things, know that you are welcome here. Hashtag, you are welcome here. The furry community is one of the most welcoming communities I've ever known. It's one of the most strangest and one of the most interesting, but definitely one of the most open. With that being said, never be afraid to be who you are. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't be the person you want to be. You are welcome here and you will always be welcome here. And for everyone who is terrified and has reason to be terrified, it's going to get better. Things will make do. It's going to be rocky and things will suck, but things will come back. And you just need to hold true to your friends and your family. Maybe sign up for ACLU if you feel like your liberties have been violated due to upcoming administration or, or any future administration in general. But with that being said, know that here at SET, there are no restrictions here. People can come and go as they please and be as comfortable however they want. Always know that you are welcome here. So, uh, what do you think? Well I hear said. An applause. Oh, and really? Say, good news. There's a lot coming, and besides any effects of the upcoming administration, and right now there's a lot of tension that's manifesting in the form of protests and sometimes riots. So if those have been reported in your area, just stay safe. Because yeah, I've seen course. them in my hometown, Baltimore, even though that did not interfere with uh, the Thursday night game, it was still present there. Uh, credit to the M&T Bank. They took stadium. They took great security measures. Oh, yeah. Mm. They kept the game running smoothly. Um, yeah. So yeah, just right now it's like what you do now matters most. Mm. I'll say that. How do you? I, I I will say it's been a very very tough week for all of us. Like I I've had a lot of things that was on my mind and a lot. It, there was a lot of happiness. There was a lot of sadness. But um, how are you feeling, Naka? I have had better weeks. At first, when the upcoming administration was elected, I was I was scared at first. I had to take a few days to try and think it over. I had to kind of seclude myself. All the more, re all the while, I was having some very serious issues going on at my school that involved the safety of myself. Mm. And it's been an up and down week, but this weekend has been a lot nicer than it has been in the past week or two. I've gotten to just relax, get stuff off of my mind, play games, listen to music, do what I want to do, and it's allowed me to take myself away from what's go what's been going on in the world. Yeah, just just remember the song. Take a moment to think of just flexibility, love, and trust. And they repeat that again, and I don't know what it is, but that song right there just, you know speaks emotions for all of us. And I would highly recommend you guys listen to that song on your own because it's truly a wonderful song to hear. Yeah. How are, and oh, sorry. I was gonna, oh, <laughs> I was gonna say, and um, I hope your week has been okay, Cruz. I know that you've had a rough week as well. Yeah, um, not too bad. Cause I just had two late nights due to one, due to the election and um, being in the history and studying poli sci might even major in poli sci it's either that and or history but anyways that and uh ravens having a thursday night game the next day uh so 
yeah, I've been tired most of the week, but things have gone. They're, they're getting better this weekend. And, you know, as far as your emotional status, mm-hmm. you know, following this week, um, at least a lot of the music I listen to, some of the stuff that we had on set even, like, um, and this is the reason I guess I've sort of seen this kind of situation coming, like the violent sleep of reason. That's pretty much it sums up what's going on. Hardwired mm. to self-destruct. There you go. Mm. Which we will get to later. Megadeth, dystopia. So, I mean, it, you can take, or at least for me, it takes comfort in the fact that other people know about this. They see it the same way I do, that, you know, there's maybe there's not a solution, but we have to just ride it out the best we can and just care for each other. That's the most important thing to me, I think, is, you know, caring for your fellow man, fellow wolf, dog, whatever, whatever, what have you. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, they'll do the same for you. Mm. Well, with that being said, let's let's take a more optimistic route, and we need to talk. We need to talk about entertainment. So, I um. Uh, what now? I, I'm sorry. I just I received a I received I just received a message from another person, and uh, uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> but uh, but, uh, but anyway, we are getting off topic. No more, no more sad faces, okay, guys. We're we're going to keep we're going to keep things a little bit more interesting. So let's move it on to music with cruise. All right, cruise with music, rather. I got my music I got, cruise. In. I got my um, I got my words mixed up. Anyway, cruise music. Yes, we'll do that. Right now, we start off with you know one of those. What do you call it? Oh happy go lucky kind of things with Mr. Bruno Mars and 24K Magic. By the way, that is referring to 24 karat gold, not 24K resolution, which that would be, you know, we're only at 4K and I've seen even 8K now. So, I mean, there's way off in the future. Mm. Anyway, 16K. Yeah. <laughs> but I give yes. this guy credit for giving us a delightful bunch of memes like the catch a grenade especially in a military uh, context meme. Do you, yeah, Halo. Let, Punk, let, what? The what? I, I don't know what you mean by Halo. Sticky Halo. grenades in Halo. You will catch a grenade. Oh, ha! Good. And Semtex and, and like, Call of Duty games, but like, I don't want to talk about Call of Duty right now. There's one that's like, um, it says, I'll catch a grenade for you, and that shows a soldier chucking a grenade, and it's like, go long. <laughs> So let me guess, Cruz. You don't like Bruno Mars, do you? Uh, new stuff is not nearly as annoying. Um, I did enjoy the Super Bowl halftime show, especially because he he just he didn't just sing his songs. He just came out like playing drums, and that's another one of the memes like that Bruno Mars at the Super Bowl was Patrick uh, at the Bikini Bottom Bowl. He was Patrick the on the bowl. drums. Bubble Bowl. Do 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 do. And, um, well, yeah, this old stuff, like, like the perfect just the way you are, I'm like, please, God, no. Do you just new not st- like that song or something? Yeah, I don't. But okay. the new stuff is better. And I mean, this one, uh, I listened to a little bit of it, and it's actually, it's, I'll, I will say, it's. I'm surprised more you find. Catchy. Go ahead. It's more, it's more catchy and less annoying than what has usually been stuff that he's done. Like, Uptown Funk was the one that I find actually less annoying. I enjoyed it actually a little bit, mostly for the the meme. But um this one is a good, a good follow up for that. I'm a, I'm, I'm surprised you I'm surprised you hate uh just the way you are more than I want to be a billionaire. I mean that one was just I don't know which exactly came first, but that one was just like who is it? It was it wasn't just Bruno Mars. It was him and some guy named Trevor, I think. But I'm like, Trevor or Taylor? I don't know. But that was just like I'm like, please shut the fuck up. You're already a billion billionaire. Shut the fuck up. Quit whining. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Who doesn't want to be a billionaire, right? Yeah, I want to buy all the things I never had. Yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> I have a, I have a squeaky chair. So if you're hearing for once, it's not my chair. 
it, 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 my chair is the worst. Like, whenever I'm moving it, there is, like, just this awful squeakiness that comes along with it. And there's nothing, and there's little to nothing I can do about it. There's, I can't spray WD-40 on it because it's not going What do you to... mean you can't? I don't have WD-40 on it. I don't have WD-40. Get them. Uh, it's... There's a sign in the cabin that we stayed at in North Carolina that says, if you can't fix it with uh, hammer and nails, WD-40, or duct tape, then it ain't worth fixing. No. I I I, I hey, kind of just want to get my own a oil dab. and buy it. Sorry, you but anyway, an oil dab, probably. But anyway, Bing. let me <laughs> hit that oil dab. Let me, okay. But anyway, let me talk about uh, Bruno Mars 2K4 Magic 24K Magic. I was looking at it. I surprise. I was surprised it wasn't rated for mature content. I am well, really it's surprised. A little, it's it's far less. Um, because it's really risque for one. Well, well, it's far it's far less risque than the next thing we have. Like, I mean, I remember when I said that? Um, I think it was Nathan Sykes's video that was shower sex. Basically, this next one is the, the upcoming one. Mm. <laughs> it's, just, it's it's the same. Yeah, I totally see what you mean. Anyway. Yeah, I I don't have WD forty. I'm so sorry. It I know I should totally cheap get one. Flame but... thrower. All you need is one of those like big lighters that you can get for like two dollars, and then knock it, knock it, knock it, knock it, knock it, knock it, no, no, knock it, knock it, no. I don't, I'm, I'm not I don't, doing that. I don't do this. Some this has actually happened in my auto shop, and I got scared because people started playing with fire, literally. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I don't, I've, yeah. I've been there in the uh, the metalworking shop when you had like Please four propane don't set stuff on fire four propane forges next to each other with large propane cans nearby and it's like always like you have to be careful not to hit any of them or like go close to any of them with a hot iron it's a little nerve-wracking at first but then you get used to it oxyacetylene's uh, a little a lot more combustible than propane just letting you know yeah of yeah. course anyway <laughs> uh 24k magic sounds a lot more like not annoying, but it, it almost sounds like gone for a minute. You know the the song that goes, uh, it's basically called "Baby Got Back." You know, <laughs> "Baby, I'm back, yeah, I'm here to cater Baby to got you." Back. Oh, everyone knows that song is. I like "Baby." I'll be your lover. Lie. You other people I'll... just can't deny. Okay, okay, okay. okay. No, 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 no. Cruise, 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 cruise. No. No. <laughs> I'll be your best friend. Tell me what I gotta do. That song. I it was, think it's I know actually that called. One. It was actually called "Gone for a Minute," but you know. I think I know that one, but I'm not exactly sure. Oh my god! But we will get back to. Oh, I see oh. that reference, Nero. Oh my god! Is near. Oh my gosh! You are not gonna believe what Shudder just tweeted, and I'm gonna retweet it oh, so boy. that you guys can see it. I, You'll I hate what I just retweeted. But anyway, Bruno Mars, we're getting off topic. I'll talk about it later. But... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Bruno well, Mars. That was a, that was the sound of a train wreck. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. My words are mixed up. It's just we, we need to stay on topic, and I we can't just keep going all over the place. But Bruno Mars, I, I'm not really too interested in, their, in, in his music. I listen to a lot of his music, but only because his music was on the radio. And honestly... That's really all I can say regarding Bruno Mars. Naka? I'm not a fan of his music, while well, just because I find it way overplayed. Uh, his Super Bowl yeah, yeah. performance was good. I do like him as an artist. Nice. He's a fantastic nice. artist. Don't get me wrong. It's just when you and hear I the think... same songs 40 times in a day. Yeah. Top 40, my ass. <laughs> it's the same five songs. Same the five same songs. five songs! It really is when you think about it. Yeah. The radio station, they play the same fucking songs. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, and to his credit, I think the songs he's done have gotten better. Uh, less, it's sort of like, that's in it, how I find, how I call it, an artist like finding their niche, finding their style. Uh, uh, Naka, can you like doing. send that tweet? Like, can you send was the that tweet it, on the was chat? That the one of the book? How to yes. be. Yeah, how to be a billionaire. Yeah. Oh. Eleven chapters. 
<laughs> now, now all the yeah, old... yeah, yeah. So it can file Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now the old, you know, commercials and whatnot he's done are coming back. Like, there's one he did of McDonald's, and then go ahead and look at it. It's so it? funny. Go ahead and look I, at the tweet, guys. <laughs> you know, it, it took me like up until this year to realize that Trump was in Home Alone too. I had no idea that was him. That when he's the guy who says down the hall and to the left, down the hall and to the left. He was also on I, um, uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah, he was. Where Carlton goes, it's like a it's two the second Donald, cam- and then he faints, it's like a two which second is hilarious. Cameo, but I'm like, what the fuck? He actually did that shit. But anyway, uh-huh. but anyway, uh, that's that's all I have to say about two twenty four K magic. Same. Uh, I mean, it's 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 kind of like it's just. It's not impressive, but it's also not bad. It's just it's it's a new thing they did. Mm-hmm. Anyway, anyway, the next thing we have is from Denke or D N C E. It was rigged from the it. beginning. It was rigged from the beginning. Yeah, it was. Essentially, a mutation. Yeah. <laughs> it was rigged. Essentially, a mutation of the defunct boy band, the Jonas Brothers, who only got popular because of the Disney Channel. DNCE came, or I don't know how you're supposed to say it. They just, in the music video, they say DNCE. I imagine you could say dance and get away with it, but they came right out of the gate with that earworm, Cake by the Ocean, which makes absolutely no fucking sense unless you're on speed or something. While that technically would be considered their debut, it wasn't their out, al- it wasn't an album. That is what they are going to do with an ep- 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 eponymous title, which is uh, the word I know because of Metallica, because it's giving your name to something. Because Metallica's album of ni- 1991 album is called Metallica, or the Black, also album. known as also known as the Black Album, hmm. for clarity purposes. So the album is called DNCE by DNCE. Shut up it will be released on november 18th and still sounds i want to say not as bad as scarfy's squeaking chair okay okay can we not talk about my my squeaking chair it's not my well, problem. If the squeaking chair wouldn't talk then we wouldn't have it it's not my problem you know it's worse okay. than having a squeaky chair having a floppy <laughs> stick and i'm talking on a <laughs> controller i'm talking on a controller <laughs> Okay. Anyway, DNCE. I mean, I. Oh, yeah, it is um, I, one of the Jonas Brothers. In it. I forgot to mention, it's I want to say, it's not Nick Jonas and it's not Joe Jonas. It's the third one, I think. I think even if I had all. WD forty, I don't know where to spray it. God. Spray it at it's the not hinge gonna... where the where it moves. Oh well. It. It is it is Joe Jonas. Anyway, that's oops. who it is. So if you liked that him, you might recognize his. Uh, oh, Shutter! God, f- fucking damn it! It was only a matter of time, honestly. I know. And this and this is the the uh, this is the one I was talking about with the explicit or risque NSFW forewarning before you open any of the songs if you. Do they have them? Yeah. Yeah. God, can you keep it in your pants. Put that thing away. There are like children here. We're getting off topic again. Yep. Yeah. I don't really care for DNCE, sadly, because yeah. Jonas Brothers. Yeah. But yeah, Body, and, body Moves is the song. Whoever I'm disliked out. is a. And I don't mean I to think call it was Farron because he's being a dick. I, I no, I don't. I wouldn't call it. I wouldn't call it Farron, but whoever disliked us. I mean, he said he did, but I think it was as a joke. But for Screw real, you. maybe do it as a joke once. I mean, that's the only time, but you only get that one chance, and now your chance is gone forever. Yeah, yeah, we need more We need more likes on the thing to get rid of the amount of dislikes it has. But anyway. Because people will dislike for just stupid reasons. Yeah, it's... They it's want to try and make a lightsaber. Anyway. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. So the one song that has the risque music video is Body Moves, and that one's, it's it's like, I mean, it's just like basically taking all the hardcore scenes out of a porno and just putting it to music. 
Yeah, you know, pretty much. All the foreplay I, shit. That's that's what it is. You you do realize that <laughs> whenever you m mention Jonas Brothers, you give me cancer, right? I already have the cancer. Yeah, me too. So I I've watched both both videos. They're they're pop bands, and yeah, that's really all I have to say about it. Like this is this is like watching that thing of like Little Wayne playing the guitar. He's like. <laughs> Still not as good as Lil Wayne. Best rock and roll guitarist all time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Everyone knows the guitar's being played for him. God, just just, just stop. I don't know why. <laughs> Anybody like... want to know my opinion on this? Mm -hmm. On DNCE? Sure. Hate it. Don't want it. Let's don't move on, it. I guess. <laughs> but I will reference one Thor thing of Corey Taylor in his... Uh, Scarfy has made jokes about um, his supposed response to Kanye's I'm the greatest living rock star of all time. He starts off with Kanye, you are not not the greatest living rock star of all time. The fact that you had to tell people that kind of says it all. It's like, you remind me of the guy who brags about getting pussy and they never get as much as they say they do. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! Yeah. He, he just roasts pretty hard. <laughs> All right, but anyway, next we have something that's actually not pop for once, even though. Mm. Yeah, just keep going. I'm I'm already dreading bringing it up, but we yeah. just it's some. Have to it's, do it. Well, I mean, it's it's you can consider it pop because you know what country's done. But anyway, you know who it is. Maybe. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Miranda Lambert, The Weight of These Wings. And that title makes sense when you consider that this is a hefty 24-song album split on two discs with named, respectively, The Nerve and The Heart, which is apparently about her split with Blake Shelton. And yes. the only thing I like about that guy is his banter with Adam Levine on The Voice, which was actually genuinely funny to watch. Because they just go back and forth at each other, and but just like the voice, but or rather, but just like American Idol, the voice has gone to shit with Miley Cyrus. Anyway, let's mm -hmm. pretend that never happened. I have a question for you guys. What? I've been getting a lot of posts uh, from Shutter and I think uh, Nero regarding uh, the books that they sent, and I. What do you read this as? I'm just gonna type it in the chat, but. What do you read this particular phrase as? GoTrump.com. Oh, yeah. I see what they mean. Go Trump, got Trump. It's that's got, why, that's, got rump.com. That's why you capitalize some of the letters. Yeah. To make sure it doesn't sound like that. Yeah, it sounds like got rump.com. President Rump. <laughs> but anyway, back to, back to what we were saying. Miranda Lambert. So, part well, the apparently the topic is about she and she split with Blake Shelton, and has now started up a relationship with this guy called Anderson East, who is an R and B artist. From what I saw, uh, would kind of make sense with part one being the nerve about about all breakup stuff, the second one being the heart. So there's two songs, one from each, called Vice from the first and Keeper of the Flame from the heart which is a lot less epic than it sounds it's not epic at all it's garbage to be honest because country mm. has gone to shit obviously like, honestly the only good country really was johnny cash and you could argue elvis presley too I, that's that's about it I, I i hate to i hate to break it to you guys but i actually prefer pop music even the soda pop music over country any day of the week that Wait, so, there's a, so there's a hardcore pop singer called Root Beer out there that I missed? <laughs> Wait, what? Soda pop oh. music. Well you did say well you did say soda pop once, or is or was it piss pop? I forgot. Piss anyway. pop. Piss anyway. Pop. What do you have to say about Miranda Lambert, Naka? Uh it's I actually can tolerate this music. Shockingly. Really? But, Wow. Yeah, because I, I don't listen I, to a lot of country music, but I'm fine with it. 
I do not like country music, so that's the exact reason why I guess it's, it's kind of because it. my sister used to be a huge fan of Carrie Underwood, so she would play that a lot, and that kind of pissed me off. At you that. know what? Carrie Underwood, I don't even think qualifies as an actual country singer, because she does a lot of pop music. I think recently, yes, but with, with um, it was kind of the... Uh, you could tell that she came from country to pop. It's not just pop. You could tell that there was a background of country. I do, well, I, I do however, oh, wanted yeah. to see a duet with yeah. both Carrie Underwood and Taylor Swift. But yeah. Jack, you got modern country is pop with a twang. Or it's, you know, it's been, it's been you know, engulfed by the um, oppressive, cancerous pop music industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's, it's swallowing up, like, you know, all these talentless, auto-tuned artists and yeah. just making them ungodly popular. I, I, I just, yeah. I already Taylor, know, Taylor I already Swift. know how to, I already know how to, how to sound like a country singer. Just imitate the shot clock, shot clock sound of a buzzer. Oh, yeah. And, okay, now imitate you going through puberty. I'm going through puberty. Put those two together, and you got country. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. That's 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 that that is. I will never say never. Gosh, that's yeah. so awful. I think that was. I'm driving down the road. <laughs> that guy who did the vocal imitation voice, like, or like, or like another thing was like, life is like Rihanna song work. It's just work, 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 and then I can't really understand the rest. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. Did you get that? I think. Yeah, anyway, Taylor, yeah. yeah, that's all I have to say regarding it. Yeah, Taylor Swift was, n- I don't think she was ever country, honestly. Not really. Yeah. But anyway, um, that, what you said, Naka, kind of reminded me of um, Jared Dines, one of my favorite YouTubers, does a lot of metal, metal stuff. He did combination genres. One of them was mm. heavy, heavy metal and pop, and the result was called Soda Can. <laughs> I'm like, it's just like, you know, just calm metal riff with like some sparkly electronic music and stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, what the fuck? Mm. I just have... you sound like Kermit. It's not easy being green. But anyway, I will. I need to make one comment about uh, Cruz brought up Blake Shelton. Like, other than like his banter on the voice, the one thing I actually know him from is that. NBC and NBCSN's NASCAR coverage, like mm-hmm. just before a race starts, they have a modified version of "Bringing Back the Sunshine" sung by mm. Blake Shelton, and it's always so refreshing to hear that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he kinda, my goodness! He kind of looks like um, he looks almost a bit like Dale Earnhardt Jr. Mm. Just a little bit. They look kind of similar. Now that you th- now that you talk about it, <laughs> but anyway, NASCAR is a different actually. subject for another day. For another day, for another room. Okay, well now we get to the good stuff. Kermit mm. is country. Well, I mean, I yeah. don't know. That's Back I, the way you, can, you might say Kermit is country, but that's none of my business. Mm. Good one. All right, well, gang, it's almost time. In the wake of the recent election, it's become more and more apparent that we are hardwired to self-destruct. Regardless of your views, I think we can all agree that we are so fucked, shit out of luck, hardwired to self-destruct. Now, first off, Metallica actually has fixed the drums versus that awkward, clunky-sounding kit in Death Magnetic, which Mm. didn't take too much away, but, you know, you could tell that there were faults in production and all that crap. Mm. But I think they've, besides that, they've also started to include more uh, melodic sounds or melodic riffs while, with, hold on, blah, while staying through, stay, that, while staying true, through, not through, to their revived thrash sound. So far, Moth into Flame and Atlas Rise both feature more melodic, even Iron Maiden-esque in the latter case, riffs and solos. Hardwired is more like a, a Death Magnetic B-side, kind of like, um, oh, it sounds almost exactly like That Was Just Your Life, but with the 
just more shorter and more harsh to the point. And deadlier. Yeah, metallic. And deadlier. Was well, so <laughs> fucked. Yeah. And that's why it's like, normally Metallica doesn't actually have that many curse words in their songs. I think Slayer is the one who's used the most because, well, especially not not just recently, but especially going up to late, um, especially going into the 90s and 2000s, especially. Like Christ Illusion has a lot of cursing in it. Um, of yeah. the big four, I think, yeah. Ass! Not quite like that. While the other three of the big four thrash bands have arguably aged better than Metallica because, well, maybe because of Lars. You know, I mean, yeah, he's old and he doesn't really play that well anymore, but he still can sound good in studio. Give him credit for that, even though he doesn't play the double bass parts live, which is kind of irritating because it's like, why do it in studio if you can't do it live? It's kind of thing. Hmm. And it's 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 acceptable if it's like something you did maybe like twenty years ago. Like, I mean, he even was able to do Trapped Under Ice, albeit at a slightly slower pace, but he could still do it. Anyway, Metallica still has plenty of fuel left. Let me see what I did there. And I am personally excited for this album because Metallica has and continues to be one of my all-time favorite thrash and heavy metal bands. So we have, I think we put uh, Hardwired up there first because that was the first thing mm -hmm. of the new album they released. Um, and my favorite. The, yes. My personal favorite, I want to say, is it's a tie between Moth into Flame and Atlas Rise for different reasons. I love Atlas Rise. It almost I don't want to say it sounds like the second version of Master of Puppets, but it almost sounds like it, and I actually that really enjoy like it. sounds like a mashup of master of puppets and hallowed be thy name by iron maiden mm. so the chorus and the harmonic solo is just harmon harmonized because harmonic is different to a guitar player it's it's the different sound mm. but um yeah i think uh, on youtube they've done extended versions with the extended uh, melodic solo and it sounds really good so i agree um what was i going to say God damn it. I was going to say something really good. But, um, God damn it, I'm forgetting. You know, you guys, just, whatever you were thinking, let me remember what I was apparently going to say. So, step away for a little I'll bit. I'll let you go first, Scarfy. <laughs> I am very, very excited for, uh, I'm very, very excited for this album, and I haven't even listened to the whole thing. And Atlas Rise, in my opinion, as well as Moth, you know what? I like all the songs that is listed I here from Metallica. I, I, they all sound unique. They all sound original. Nothing about. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to make a lot of money. It doesn't matter if you put a parental label on this album. It's going to sell. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that. And um. And I, I forgot. I like, remember. are the physical cop? Are the CDs being like? Don't tell me like the CDs are almost like I want to say sold out I, I don't think they're sold out i don't think they're sold out cds don't know I, I can't tell you for sure i doubt it at this point because you i'm pretty sure you can still pre-order them they might sell out in stores mm -hmm. but yeah. if you pre-order it you'll definitely get it you know want to know so. what's you want to know what's interesting about heavy metal i never listen to any heavy metal on the radio and i tend to wonder why that is I think there is heavy metal on the radio, but I think it's more on um, like, like ser serious... satellite radio yeah. or they like serious like, rock have, uh, rock stations. Ozzy's, Ozzy's Boneyard is a really good one. They play a lot of old classic metal. I have um, a I have a story about yeah. that. Oh, That's tell us. A, so, uh, so my local hard rock station, ninety nine point nine KISW, shameless plug. On a Saturday from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., so it goes from Saturday night to Sunday morning, it is the metal shop, and it is mm -hmm. four hours of heavy metal. Really? Four. Oh, God. That's so nice. awesome. That's, uh, like, WAF in Boston. They 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 play, um, uh, it's more like... The, they they play the, some of the same songs over and over, but they're good ones. Like mm -hmm. they play 
some of Disturbed's new songs. They played, um, I think it's Red Sun Rising. Um, what are the other ones? Pop Evil, uh, Papa Roach, mm. Five Finger Death, Not some of those modern metal all. bands. And um, what was I thinking of? Uh, I did remember some the songs that were released um, before this. Um, they had so, yeah, Lords of Summer and the Ronnie Medley, Ronnie Rising Medley tribute to Ronnie James Dio. Mm-hmm. Um, those are listed on the album, right? I think just with the Lex edition. I'm not sure, but um, I hope that they fix the production for uh lords of summer because that the initial production was just complete garbage there was you could not hear the bass the drums sounded like all over the place clunky as all fucking hell and the guitar was just like there was it was just completely dry not like it, it, it sounded like there was no weight to it it was just like you plug in your guitar you don't turn up the bass at all but I hope that they change it because the rest of it sounds really good. And I'm hoping I agree to that. that we can actually get some uh, actually get some more of Lars playing a double bass, even if he doesn't do it live, which I wish he would do more often mm. because the double bass is used like throughout Lords of Summer. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to say, are you? it's not all new stuff because obviously they're, I mean, they they recycle like riffs get recycled all the time mm-hmm. and um i i think it's nice that they, they combined some of the old riffs they had with new other things like they added sort of a uh leper messiah breakdown it's a lords of summer they like hardwired is kind of like that was just your life in a way so I'm pretty excited to see what they're going to do. Um, I'm hoping I can eventually see them in concert because I don't think they're leaving or they're they're going to be stopping anytime soon. Although mm. Lars has said that he would move to Denmark if Trump was elected. So we'll have to see what happens about that. As I think, no, no, they're in South America right now. I think they last played in Puerto Rico, I believe. Mm. Or Costa Rica. One of those countries. There's, they seem like they're always... In like Central America, they they play there. Apparently, they have a huge fan base uh, in Mexico too. Mm. But yeah, I think that's most of my bit on Metallica. We're ready for this. Hardwired to self destruct. We finally get to see the last of the big four with their new albums, and I am hopeful. Okay, that's really all I have to say about Metallica, Naka. Uh. Playing Forza Horizon 3, I finally got around to uploading some songs to my OneDrive, which is basically Microsoft's answer to Google Drive. It's not very good, no offense, Microsoft. Just well, because my upload speed... Uh, I tried uploading less than 200 megabytes worth of songs. I couldn't even get 10 minutes through. Only for 5 to 12 songs were uploaded. Wow. Is the internet just really that bad for you? Oh my god, don't even get me started. I mean, for me, it's weird. It's like, my download speed's okay, but my upload speed is like ungodly Shit. fast. No, it's fast for me. It's like up in the can 90s. Can I have that internet? Like, I don't know how much I need this. I'm, I'm more concerned with downloads. But yeah. yeah. But I'm anyway. I'm more concerned with uploads, but... Uh, so I finally decided to upload some music into OneDrive so I could play Forza Horizon 3 and have my own music playing without killing my computer. Mm. And when you have Metallica going, when you're going 190 miles an hour, down the freeway, turning off to go off a big sand dune, and you have Hardwired playing in the background, it makes the game about 6,000 times better. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I do I, also I agree. They put fuel in that, I think, the recent Dodge commercial. Yeah, no, every time I hear those Dodge commercials, I'm just like, so oh, great. yeah. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that we're trying to say. Ow! All right. To answer Shutter's yeah. question, I'm on CenturyLink. Yeah. Yeah, CenturyLink is bad. Dial-up is worse, Shutter. I'm literally on the bone zone. 
oh. the bones. Well, at least, well, I mean, at least you're not on Time Warner Cable. I mean, their internet's kind of bad. I don't know what Iris and McDaniel is. I, I cannot remember. I know that the last, I think, I forget what the last one we had him in Worcester was, but it was like, char no, it was Charter was what we had in Worcester, and it, that was just fucking, like, the worst I've ever seen. Mm. And whatever work, whatever they have here tends to work, except it doesn't work on your phone, but. My internet is so far stable. Anyway. Yeah. And also speaking, one last thing about uh, election-related stuff. Um, Guys, we need to hurry up. Yeah, there was hurry something up, I saw long ago that was Donald Trump, um, some of sound bites done to Jekyll and Hyde, Five Finger Death Punch. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily pro-Trump, but it's just really good because it just puts everything in perspective of what's going on in our country. And now with that, I will pass it on to Naka to give us another dose of what looks like chaotic awesomeness. Planet Coaster. Planet Coaster, Planet Coaster, Planet Coaster, Planet Coaster! Hype! It, it's essentially the spiritual uh, successor to Roller Coaster Tycoon, and I am hyped. There is some competition as it releases a day after Roller Coaster Tycoon World, which, by the way, don't get that. Atari only brought back the franchise because they thought they could capitalize on Roller Coaster Tycoon because it's become popular on the internet again. Mm. I say I'm torn between the two, but it's really because both are roller coaster games where you can launch people off the rails at high speeds. At least Planet Coaster is being developed by the people who made Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, which I do have sitting on my shelf just over there. Do you have, like, all these video games just sitting on your shelf? Next thing you're going to tell me is that you have Total Annihilation. I don't have Total Annihilation. Did someone annihilation. say Annihilation? <laughs> it's just my shelf <sighs> that's within range of my computer desk has Civilization 4 and Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. <laughs> I, I totally see what you mean. <laughs> but it's actually going to be good instead of Roller Coaster Tycoon World. I don't really need to explain much. It's literally the sequel to Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 under a different yeah. name. It'll be out for the PC on the 17th this week. And oh my god, I am hyped. Somebody give me money so I can buy this game. Please. You, do, did you like RCT a lot? I love it. I love it. Oh. Hmm. I, literally... I mean, I've never played it. So I, I haven't played it myself, wrong with you? but I've seen my I, friend play it. I don't have, I never player. had like a computer to play it. Yeah. I've been, I've been watching people play it. Like, I've watched all the shit you can do with it, like make roller coasters that don't actually have an ending so people just fly off. I think you can do that. Yeah, with uh, Open Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, which is a Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 mod, there are cheats to where you can set, uh, like, there's usually a cap for um uh, like launch speed in the base game but there's a cheat to disable that yeah i think that's so you could send people just so watch like, people off the ride mm -hmm. either throw people off the right or you can make them go around at 255 miles an hour <laughs> never ending loop it's like the people would throw up because of that exactly they, they i think they would do a little more than that people would like have like fucking aneurysms and shit I don't know. People would just uh, their brains would, would explode from the forces. Anyway, the brain would literally implode. I just have to say one thing. I saw Doom, and I'm like, yes, so fucking metal. But yeah, I unfortunately for me, I probably won't buy this game anytime soon. I mean, like, don't don't get me wrong. I have nothing against Roller Coaster Tycoon, and I certainly don't have anything against this game. It looks interesting. The commercial look the trailer looks interesting i just i don't think i'd buy it myself yeah, maybe not i don't know if I'd, I, 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 I i like those games where you can mess around with it like i used to play sim city a lot but I've well sim city was awesome that's yeah, the whole sort thing. of gotten out of that game obviously mostly the thing i spent doing was like using a giant you know hammer or whatever to smash things and what setting robots on buildings and whatnot like the original uh, Sim City game, yeah. the best like, version was on the Super Nintendo. And the 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 ad for Sim City Mayor, it's like, I built the city, and I can also destroy it. Vote for me, or you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody got what they want to say. Yeah. I'll take that as a yes. We're I moving on to for the next one. 
Killing Floor 2. The sequel to <clears throat> Killing Floor has had an early release for a long time, but it's finally being officially released. If you want to know more about it than just me, just look for at Angel at Redline on Twitter and go talk to him about it. Instead, a, m af a month after the first game, where a biotech firm outbreak causes create zombie-like creatures, or Zeds, that paralyze the European Union, and now have spread all across the world. It's only a tiny bit like CSGO, the zombie game. Only because each Zed you kill, you get money and experience to buy stuff in the game. Uh, skins are optional, but none of that crap. I've seen some streams of it from the same guy that I mentioned. And it looks pretty good. It's on the 18th for PS4 and PC. Along with Linux, but there's no Mac port right now. I liked the trailer for this. It kind of, yes, does remind me of CSGO and Doom sort of together. Um, I think I'd be interested in this if I'm not sure because I do not have a PS4 or a uh, PC or I don't know. What did I just? I think I just PC twice. Anyway, I don't have Linux because I am a pleb who is, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a Mac person. I'm a Mac and I'm a PC. I'm hiding in a pizza box. <laughs> All right. Uh, that one. I have a quick little announcement to make. Uh, Scarf will be right back momentarily. That is all. Yeah. Something. So, uh, Killing Floor 2, uh, Angel at Redline, or just Angel for that matter, uh, I've seen a lot of his streams when he's done Killing Floor 2, and he's usually playing with a lot of friends, and they're just blaring metal music, because that's yes. the theme of the game. And, yeah, the, the the whatever song they used for the the trailer was pretty awesome. Not quite like the, you know, gent extreme metal from Doom, but still some good shit to you know blow stuff up to. Mhm. Mm yeah. So good. Go um, follow him on Twitter for the love of God. <laughs> shameless plug, Angel. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. You must plug all the things. It's only the second time I've done that. I mean, I like to do shameless plugs just for mm -hmm. the sake of it. Just say, well, what do you know? It's a shameless plug. I have no responsibility for this. <laughs> it's like, where is this plug? It's like it's un it's uh, turned upside down and it's just lying on the floor. And then somebody steps on it and it's like, shameless. What? It is shameless. Because Shame. it does not want you. Because it doesn't feel any remorse. It is shameless. It is not ashamed of being stepped Metallica on. Metallica reference. Shameless Metallica reference. No remorse. No repent. We don't care what it meant. What's All right. up? <laughs> Alright, so... Killing Floor 2, we go from another game that has a 2 in the title. Watch Doge. Yes, Watch Dogs 2. The sequel to the Smash hit of Watch Dogs is finally releasing. This game is set in San Francisco versus... I don't know, wherever the fuck the first game was set. With a new protractus... New... Protractus? Protagonist. Named Marcus Holloway. The game is supposed to have a lighter story compared to the first, but will have expanded hacking abilities. And this is the reason why I'm scared to death to go outside, as I can never know when somebody will fuck me up with random ass traffic lights and whatever the crap, and having the hackers make my phone explode even though it's a not a Samsung Note 7. It's looking to be a fun game though. The first release is on the 15th for Xbox One and PS4, whereas the PC version will be releasing on the 29th. Much like Gears of War 4, I'm going to do an update for that show where we talk about a PC release. But, uh, yeah, what do you think about it? Um, yeah, I, I knew that Watch Dogs, the first one, was really successful. And according to Farron, it might have been Chicago, which I can believe. Um, I yeah, think, it's, uh, yeah, it's Chicago. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what it was about, but I see it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a mix of Grand Theft Auto and Hitman. And I think I, it's something I'd probably be really interested in because it's... Uh, yeah, it's also, Chicago. Yeah, I'm planning on getting Battlefield 1. And then also I think this would be the next game for me to get since 
I mean, I, I just feel like I just want to jump right into it because this, mm -hmm. uh, I like the look of this one. Um, I didn't really see much from the first one other than the Watch Doge meme, really. <laughs> She's like, wow, much hack, very vigilant. So Doge. Watch Doge is... Right, but I'm... yeah, I'm, this one looks really cool. I like the, I like the um, sort of emoji or like emote, like video daft mm -hmm. punk mask the guy has yeah i'm like back that, hi welcome like back thing. and then hey. exclamation point eyes and whatnot yeah. what game are we talking about watch, watch dogs Doge. 2 oh Doge. wow you got that you got far that fast wow i didn't expect it anyway um i i know that i know that you already talked about killing four too but let me just go Wait, go i'll yeah. let you bring it yeah, up all right do it um killing four two i I have no interest in seeing this at all, I, in getting this game at all. It's just another zombie game. I'm pretty sure it almost seems like another, uh, in, another scene, it seems like another add-on to like a, a zombie game that you would get from uh, Call of Duty. And there's just, and at least that's what I'm getting. And it's just, you know, it's just another well, zombie game to me. Oh, well, there, we only went up to CSGO. We didn't go full-blown COD with it. <laughs> no, but... That's really all I have to say about Killing 4 2. And then as for Watch Dogs 2, I didn't play the first one, so I honestly have no what to... Th I, have, I, I can't really judge it based purely on, you know, it's on the game alone unless I played the first one. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing much that I can say here. I, I know it sounds like I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to feel like I'm, you know, bashing or anything like yeah. that. Or I, didn't, I didn't know much about the first one either, but I'm just to get take this one for what it is and i figure uh, usually it's not wise i guess to jump in but i did do that for batman because i didn't play i have since 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 playing uh, arkham knight i have played arkham origins I think. yeah um so it, it's earlier in the storyline but um i think it's 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 still if if, if it interests you it's still worth playing it, it does have some really cool tech features to it. I mean, it has cool tech features, but I remember like the the day when Watch Dogs One came out, like it wasn't as good as everyone thought it thought it was. <clears throat> it was actually don't don't get me wrong, it was actually uh it was better, but like it was better than what they got, but at least but it, it wasn't like the biggest hit that everyone thought it would be. So I don't understand why a Watch Dogs Two is going to make it any better. And maybe they yeah, will make it better. I don't know. Shadowed by Wolfenstein, I think. Yeah, but by Borkenstein. <laughs> Bork, Bork, Bork. Hey, yeah. that's stop it, son. You are doing me a frighten. <laughs> but anyway, that's all I have to say regarding Watch Dogs Two. All right, everybody good? Everybody good? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Moving on to the big title, titles of the week, Pokemon Sun and Moon. Mm. I actually have to go uh, to GameStop I... and cancel my pre-order right now because I am not in the best of financial situations. Mm. I was hoping to go. Yeah, I had to, I had to, to adjust mine job. too, but I didn't cancel it. But I had to switch it over to something else. Yeah, no, I was hoping to have had <laughs> I a forgot. job. I'm not going to have money at this time. Go ahead, keep going. I was going. Just... I was hoping to have a job before, you know, getting it. But, uh, other than that, Sun and Moon are alive for Generation 7 of Pokemon. So, the sort of main gimmick of the game is, is that Sun is 12 hours either before or after Moon. So, say if it's noon in Sun, or like you're playing Pokemon Sun and it's 12 o'clock p.m., or say it's 12.01. So, universe, so the, the universal time in that game is automatically opposite of Moon. Yes. Saying? It is That's 12 hours. Cool. So basically, when it's sunny out, it will be so like it's daytime, daytime in sun, is daytime for dark. nighttime in moon, is... daytime in moon, nighttime in sun. Nighttime. That, that is interesting. You know, I, 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 I almost want to get nighttime. Pokemon Moon for one reason and mo one reason only, and that's for the Wolf Pokemon. Duh. Like, Duh. What do you think? All I the memes. But Rother. but but sadly, like I usually always get the first. Pokemon game that's announced, and that's the same reason why I got Diamond. I got Heart. I played Heart Gold before playing Soul Silver. Yeah, I I played Omega Ruby because it had the better Pokemon. I don't know what it is. It's like I don't I don't know if it's just you know 
me being biased, but I guess you can say when it comes to certain Pokemon, I'm just never satisfied with its other one because I just prefer, you know, can I it's it's first over it's okay well mm -hmm. it's pokemon what do you expect keep going with new starters new pokemon a whole new story a team that i can actually like even though it's the bad guys and a whole new reason skull. to explore team skull like when i, I was like... playing the demo i just i got vibes from jet set radio feature i'm just like okay i like this game pokemon sun and moon will be the talk of the town for a little while pokemon bank functionality will still remain thank god and with Pokemon, and due to Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow being on the eShop, you can transfer Pokemon from there to your Pokemon Bank and use them in Sun or Moon. Maybe hey. one of the Pokemon you transfer has a new form unique to the Alola region. You can pick it up for mm. any of the 3DS platforms, including the 2DS piece of toast, and the eShop on November 18th. And you can get a special right. new 3DS to show that you're playing the game. It's got special graphics and everything to reflect. Oh, hey, look, it's Pokemon Sun and Moon. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a, I think it's a 3DS XL. So it's, it's one a new bigger 3DS ones. XL. Yeah. Yeah, new 3DS XL. Uh, yeah, pretend I said that right. But just be aware that it is one of the bigger ones. It's not the regular sized one. So, I mean, which is not a huge problem. But what? just be aware of it. Let me let me let me be frank. Generation three still continues to be my favorite Pokemon generation because I want to say before Gen one, I I did play Gen one before playing Gen three, and for whatever reason, I just fell in love with Gen three a lot more than I did Gen one, and I adored it. Like there was nothing that Gen three didn't disappoint me, and the music especially was probably its its biggest are talking, point. Are you talking Ruby? And diamond ruby no ruby, ruby sapphire, sapphire and emerald. emerald yes ruby yes because I, I played ruby i believe yeah with pokemon sun and moon like i'm looking at this game and not only okay i understand that the alola region is kind of based off hawaii but Hawaii-y. for whatever but for whatever reason i'm kind of getting a galapagos island feel toward it because you see pokemon with different forms and different abilities that have to survive in a habitat yeah and yes yeah, yeah, so you don't know that galapagos that was where charles darwin, darwin yeah he he started his thing because he was studying different types of birds and noticed that different ones had different what forms and whatnot mm -hmm. and that's where he got his theory of evolution from i believe yes. so so it, it is very po so it is very possible and possibly probable. <laughs> see what I did there, that Pokemon got influenced not only from Hawaii but the Galapagos Islands. Yeah, it's probably that just makes a sense to me. Mm -hmm. Then take it. It's not my wallet. <laughs> I, just, I I was about to say that. Damn you! <laughs> I just love that line. But anyway, it's not my wallet. so they're like. Huh. I doubt that race car. I doubt that entirely. Race car. Soon will the end of Pokemon Cannon. Um. Uh no. They I don't know because I think that would have happened already with like the one of the Super Nintendo parodies. It's like so we've done all these legendary Pokemon of all every human emotion, every element possible. Uh, what do we do next? And it's like we go for God, and it's like. Uh no, we already have that. No, oh. it shows the Pokemon like the committee or whatever. There's and they're like, like, fuck, fuck, and it's just yeah. <laughs> already done everything. I know. <laughs> There's also the one of um Pyroar, I think. It's uh, talking to the um Sol Solio, mm -hmm. whatever from Sun. It's like, who are you? And Sol the Galio, Solio, whatever is like, I'm you, but stronger. I seriously doubt they would come out with Pokemon Earth and Mars, though there is an alien Pokemon called Deoxys. That would be No, it's a DNA stuff. Pokemon. Right, but it's also an alien, and you want to know why that is? It came on a meteorite. You, not only that, but do you want to know why it's named Deoxys? Deoxys means that they take an oxygen out, and therefore Deoxys lives up in space because it can survive without oxygen. I thought deoxys always meant deoxyribonucleic acid. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Deoxyribonucleic acid does not have oxygen in it. Only RNA. It's just, it's just DNA. Only yeah. ribonucleic acid has oxygen in it. 
Interesting. And it's single stranded while DNA is double stranded. I learned this in biology. That, yeah, he that does fossil. explain that would explain why the uh, Deoxys arms are like the double helix shape. Mm hmm. That all, it all makes sense now, especially because my biology teacher in high school happened to be a Pokemon nerd. So he would sometimes use Pokemon in just as the images on like tests and stuff. For, the like, only, the only problem, yeah, the only problem that I have with both Pokemon Sun and Moon is the fact that I don't know what it is, but you know, with Pokemon Sun and Moon, like you have different Pokemon that are only obtainable in the certain games, and. With Poke when I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, Lichen Rock Midnight Form has been tempting me to get it. But I keep look but that type, I keep looking into it and I just cannot find anything good about it. What do you mean? Just good about what? Well it's typing. Yeah, it's just a rock form. And I'm kinda like it's a little disappointing, but I do like I'm wondering, so when you, if you trade a lichen rock that you get from moon to sun, does it change into its other form? Or I don't it... think so. I don't think I don't think it would do that. I would hope not, because I would like to have the midnight form. So, I that yeah, one's much more I, badass. Yeah, but I wanted Pokemon Sun. Yeah. I really wanted Pokemon Sun, and I don't even think Pokemon Moon's, Moon's going to be all that great because when I play it, like. I don't know what it is, but every time I play the latter instead of the former, the Pokemon that I really want to get are not available in the other game, and it blows. Yeah, sometimes Does it also suck? Way. It can do both Very at the funny. same time if, if you, you ask, ask it, it to. to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, but, but, is it a good idea to microwave it reference? But anyway, I cannot wait to get this game so that I can kick Cruz's ass over and over and over again in your dreams i've already done it many times uh-huh we did it wait uh quick question did i actually uh -huh. show you guys what it's like to microwave an airbag or did you guys find that on your own i've i, saw, saw I found that. that on my own and i saw it i didn't thank, it god. thank god i'm not the only person that watches that show oh that was great I don't watch. Is it so a good what idea happened to with this that anymore? Was that... Because I, I stick. I, I stuck with um, Jonathan Pollo yeah. on he's on pretty, movie night. Yeah, I think he's he was pretty good. And uh, I've seen some of his movie night things too. But um, movie night is amazing. Yeah, I love that the fact that the the airbag. It it first of all it de it destroyed the microwave and then shot the door off like forty feet all the way the tinfoil and it broke the glass. I know, right? That was amazing. It, it was like a 0.15 second interval between when it went off and when he closed the door. Like, So it exploded first, and then he closed the door. 0.15 seconds between that and death. And because the glass plate had been shot out, too, that's what hit the door. Mm -hmm. That would have probably hurt him a lot. <laughs> it's like, anyway, I almost died. But anyway... We could with have Pokemon just died. Sun, but anyway, with Pokemon Sun and Moon... I, I tend to wonder if if um, Cruz. Uh, n n never mind. I was gonna say with Pokemon Sun and Moon. I just hope that people are excited for this region. I know I personally am, but I'm drawing a lot more inspiration. And I hope the music is good. I'm I'm hearing a lot of uh, Hawaiian melodies, of course, and all that good stuff. But. I guess the one thing that really turns me off is that Pokemon, I think, are running out of ideas, especially since they're, like, introducing Z-moves and other Pokemon with different Alola forms. It's mm -hmm. like... Or, like, why did you give a form to Raticate, like, one of the most useless Pokemon besides, well, Magikarp at least actually has a use, like... Not only that, like... It's just, like, it. stupid. And I'm like, uh, what is the difference of you extending Executor's neck? It's probably one it's of a the... It's a giraffe! No, Executor. Yeah, well, if you like taking... Now. If you like your food taking one it's... hour to reach your stomach... Yeah. It's basically a giraffe. Pretty much. Yeah. Or a palm tree, an actual palm tree giraffe. And, we, and me and Cruz, by the way, I have Pokemon both red, blue, and yellow. And I can transfer both. my Gen 1... <laughs> my Gen 1 Pokemon, oh, all three, rather, and I can transfer all of my Gen 1 Pokemon to my Pokemon Sun, and that begs the question, will I be able to transfer Mew 
from my Pokemon that's, Red. That's what I'm wondering too. And putting it into the, and putting it into Pokemon Sun because if I can, probably I would love to do that. That would be amazing because me and him already did the glitch. The the I think it's called the Mew glitch where mm -hmm. you have to the trainer glitch. Yeah, it's called like the long walk glitch. Mm -hmm. You have to glitch of the trainer and then go battle in the gym and then go back there. And then and then the menu opens up. You close the menu and you're like, oh, hi, Mew. But that's in Pokemon Yellow. Pokemon Red and Blue is different. But anyway, that's all I have to say regarding Pokemon. I'm sure a lot of people are excited. I'm sure more people less so. But what can I say? I'm a huge fan of Pokemon. I'll always love Pokemon. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. Yep. I'm really excited too. And for the record, um, Scarfy and I have had our great share uh, share of great battles. But what bothers me is that some of the losses I've had are just complete bullshit, and that I have in fact beaten him with without adherence to said official tournament rules. <laughs> well, yeah. no, that doesn't count. Sorry, I don't count that well, as a win. Well, I said official tournament rules. So, well, I mean, if you're talking about like uh, what the professional tournaments are, like what they're allowed to do, it was not no legendaries, to and you used the legendary. So, yeah, because more than just having a legendary, I actually do sometimes train them to actually do or like you know do certain things, mm. and that was that case it's at least with Mewtwo I think also guys if you ever have a chance to watch the Pokemon anime in Japanese you owe yourself to do that because four kids ruined it if no doubt just, just, yeah it's like yeah. um yeah Super Nintendo I think did that parody too it's like it shows the four kids logo yeah up the butt charge I'm, I'm really fucking annoying aren't I crapping falcon that's why people. Don't you think that's so, why people. Falcon? That's from Brawl Taunts. That's from Brawl Taunts. Yeah, I love I Brawl Taunts. I think Super Nintendo is the one who does that, but I'm not entirely. Watashi wa Shinen. Shinen I am not. I am not for vengeance. It's super effective. <laughs> hey, shut up! You're not supposed to talk. Here I come. Here I come. Here I come. Ah, uh, you're disgusting. I'm disgusting. You're the one who pulls Todd out of your vagina. Oh, oh, I just love that. Blah, 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 blah. All right. We're moving on anyway. to our final piece of video game news is Nintendo is fin is announcing that Wii U production is ending. Well, Aww, you know, sad face. It, it, it might be sad that Nintendo, that the Wii U is being halted in production. It wasn't more of the better successful Nintendo consoles, it still had mm -hmm. phenomenal games nonetheless. Oh, it did. I don't even think, like, how on earth are they going to put Smash Brothers on the NX without, you know, coming back to it? Especially when, you know, after it may be possible that Nintendo may shut eShop down, like, five years from now, and we don't even know how they're going to play the new games. But maybe they won't. I, I don't know. I mean, I hope they they if they were to shut eShop down, they'd have to replace it with something, right. and they would also have to update or remake the 3DS. Mm -hmm. Right, compatible with that. And with Nintendo Switch coming out, it's like, hmm. Hopefully, Nintendo can focus on Switch production and development for its well, release I mean, in 2017. And that's Nintendo what Switch I say. N Nintendo Switch has been, you know, overwhelmingly positive from every country, and I've seen a tweet of this. So, you know, I understand that people were... I, I understand that the Wii U wasn't as big of a selling point. I understand that it was a horribly titled console. But hey, it still had great games. It still brought us Earthbound. That's saying a lot. <laughs> you know, after waiting for what seemed like forever, waiting for a game. But, you know, it, it is sad because I remember getting my Nintendo Wii U not just two years ago. And now that it's going out of, now that Nintendo Switch is coming out, like, earlier, probably spring, it's like, hmm. And it's like, you know, what other game should I possibly get? So, in my opinion... You should get Mass Effect 3, it, Kappa. I, I'm not getting Mass Effect 3. <laughs> but anyway... 
Yeah, no Mother 3. Well, hopefully they'll release Mother 3 nonetheless. I mean, that doesn't mean they're not going to stop making virtual title games. But I don't know. I That's really all I have to say regarding the Wii U. It's just a, a sad thing that it didn't get a lot of use or a lot of years as most consoles do. And we had to, you know... Kick it in the trash can. Well, that, and it didn't really get a lot of good games. Well, it got some good games. I would say Smash Brothers and... Yeah, Smash but, 4, yeah. Yeah, anyway, what do you think, Cruz? Yeah, I did like um, Smash 4. I actually did, um, uh, when I actually went to the GameStop this month and got Genesect, which is the... the That's per- also something... Oh my, oh my god, oh my god, do you have a code? Do you have a code? Uh, no, I only had one. Yeah, you can just walk they, into they, a GameStop so, and they'll give it so to you. So what happened with this GameStop, they didn't have the actual cards, but they had the codes, and so they could only print one, I think. Mm. And it was funny, like, the stock... And it's at any the stock, stock, right? the stock of it said, like, yeah, negative... Yeah, GameStop. the stock... Or at most, I believe. The stock said it as, like, negative 33. And I'm like, wait, what? Negative 33? How the fuck? Math taught me that was impossible. <laughs> anyway, I did get a chance to play um, Pokémon Tournament, which I thought mm-hmm. was it was really cool. Except that the controller was kind of broken. It, well, I did believe, like the concept of it. Believe it or well, yeah, Pokémon is interesting in in of itself. Like there was a time, there was actually a time where you know Shadow Mewtwo was actually considered broken, Oops. <laughs> and they had to, and it got a massive nerf. So you know. I don't have Pokin and I don't have Pyro Warriors. I have Wind Waker HD and, you know, Wind Waker, my favorite Zelda game of all time. Best Zelda game ever. Play it. Um, you know, I... No love. No love. No love for Majora's Mask. Okay, I've played Majora's Mask. I like it for what it is. I think it's better than Ocarina of Time. Thank you. But it's not my favorite Zelda game. Like, I don't want to diss on... Ocarina of Time is just that it's it gets talked about so much more than Majora's Mask. Well, you do realize Ocarina of Time is the most overrated game in the history of overrated games. And it's more overrated than Skyrim. I mean, and I haven't even played it, Skyrim, so I wouldn't know how overrated it actually is. Excuse me. But Skyrim is not overrated. I, I've never played it, so I wouldn't know. But Ocarina of Time, I can only play, believe it or not, I can only play the Master Quest version of Ocarina of Time from now on. I can't go to the back to the original. Why not? Uh, Ocarina of Time Master Quest is more fun, and it's just more challenging. And okay. you have you have to be a lot more observant, and that's what I like about it. Okay. But, but you know, Ocarina of Time is a great game. It's just not my favorite. I, I do have a pristine copy of the soundtrack all in its certified factory sealed wrapping. All right, keep and it I that way. I haven't taken out of the bo- I haven't even taken it out of the packaging yet and I'm kind of waiting for it to build up in, a pretty penny. In mint condition. Well, I also have a I also have the Smash Brothers soundtrack in in mint condition and I haven't opened that one either. I used to have the um, original Mario Galaxy one, but I think I lost that. It was mm. the one that came with uh, it came with the second Wii that we got. <laughs> wow. I do think... Well, I do think that Melee had the best opening ever. Yeah, that that was the best opening ever. I can watch that opening for days. I don't know about you guys, but what do you... I, I would just, like, leave it on to watch it whenever I wasn't, you know, in a rush to play the game. I would actually take the time to watch it. Yeah. I still love... It's, it's, I, I still love uh, Brawl's uh, opening. Eh, it's not as good as Melee's, though. Okay, that's your opinion. It's true. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to disagree with whatever the truth is in this con. In this. Uh, oh, oh, come on. Just move on to me, please. Just transition. All right, moving on to Scarfy with movies. All right. <laughs> Wait, you invited me to. <laughs> well, thank you. Another Rocky film? But actually, this one looks interesting. Based on the true story of Vinnie Paz, a world championship boxer, comes the film appropriately titled, titled Bleed for This, a 2016 American biographical boxing film written and directed by Ben Younger. The film stars Miles Teller from Whiplash as Paz, with Aaron Eckhart, Katie, Sa- Katie Sa- Sagal, 
I don't want to say because it reminds me of Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal or whatever. C.R. and Hens and Ted Levine in supporting roles. Okay, so not really a Rocky film, but at least it's by the same producers as American Beauty and Silver Linings Playbook. Both great films. America Beauty is one of my favorites, by the way. Got to show you, got to show you guys that sometime. Anyways, the film stars a boxer named Vinny Paz, which has it all: money, fame, and fortune. One day, everything changes when he suffers a horrific accident, which left him not knowing if he'd ever walk again. Made one of sports' most incredible comebacks in general. While unfortunately, I myself am not a huge fan of boxing, and trust me, I should know because my dad has shown me every Rocky film there is, and I think they're just meh. The film, on the other hand, may look intriguing to you, to you guys. As for me, I think it'll do all right. That's not to say I won't see the film ever because I don't like boxing, but maybe it'll do you good. Uh, as for you guys, especially if you really like boxing, I think it'll be awesome to you. What do you think? I kind of, like, I haven't really watched the old Rocky films, even though I did, like, it, it, I sort of got what I needed from it. I, it. It's fair to say that, you know, the Rocky films may have ruined it for you, but... Um, it, 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 they have not yeah. pretty much, I, I like... Did, I did get to go to Philly, though, and do the run up the stairs where they have the Rocky statue, I think was pretty cool, but... Um, I think this one looks really good because I like Miles Teller as, as like ever since he's been you know in movies other than Divergent mm -hmm. uh, I think he's done really well especially in Whiplash um, so I think you serious? I think it's going to do well you serious? What do you, what do you mean you serious? you serious? no just because uh, J.K. Simmons, Simmons is in that movie and I and just can't get Simmons, yes Get the fuck out of my sight before I fucking demolish you. <laughs> I, I saw Whiplash. It's oh my god, Dad! Please shut up. <laughs> Football is on. I'm so sorry, everybody. Yeah, it, it's okay. It's okay. Just ignore it completely, yes. and and no one and will I notice. Want, I want I want the Seahawks to win this game because they're playing fucking New England. No, fuck the Seahawks. Yes, fuck it's the New Patriots. England. We're talking about. I I I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Cruz. Did you I'm forget? Sorry. Did you forget? It's NFL versus New England. That's how it works. I, I, I'm sorry, Cruz, but Seahawks, like, they are the most prideful team I have ever seen in, in the history of football. And I mean that, in the, and I mean that in the Maybe negative just way. For the West Coast. They are the most prideful team in the history of NFL football. That's New England. No, that is okay. Seattle Seahawks. No, it's New England, and there's proof because New England fans have been rated consistently the most annoying fans over the Eagles and, yes, over the Raiders. Well, guess what? Seattle Seahawks sportsmanship is appalling to me. That's really that all I can true, say. And I, will, I will agree to that because especially Richard Sherman. And not to say I hate him, but, you know, he's just, he's just kind of an ass. I, 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 what do you have to say about that, Cruz? I mean, Naka. About what, football? About what? Just about Seahawks and how I want them to die. In a fire. Meh. Sooner or later, God will get you down. Anyway, what do you think about Bleed for this, Snaka? Uh, I've seen a bunch of trailers because advertising. <laughs> but, uh... Okay. It actually looks pretty good, and I do like it, and I'm... I might watch it at home. It's probably going to be one of those films where I'll watch it at home, not necessarily in theaters... But I do hope it does well. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I I I can concur with that. And that's all you guys have to say. Yep. Cruz. Yeah. Cruz. Oh. Died. Okay. Well. I died from sorry. salt. Sorry. I'm drowning right. in salt. Help. Okay. Well. Anyway, let me move on. This movie that I'm going to announce is an intriguing one at that. Nocturnal Animals is a 2016 American psychological thriller film written, co-produced, and directed by Tom Ford based on the 1993 novel Tony and Susan by Austin Wright. The film stars an ensemble cast featuring Amy Adams, Jake Gyllenhaal, Michael Shannon, Aaron Taylor-Johnson, Isla Fisher, Army Hammer, Laura Linney, Andrea Riseborough, and Michael Sheen. A story inside a story in which the first part follows a woman named Susan who receives a book manuscript from her ex-husband, a man whom she left 20 years earlier, asking for her opinion. The second element 
follows the actual manual script called Nocturnal Animals, which revolves around a man whose family vacation turns violent and deadly. It also continues to follow the story of Susan, who finds herself recalling her first marriage and, confron- and confronting some dark truths about her past. Part of me with its suspenseful music and chilling setting wants me to see this movie. Sadly, I don't have much to go from this film, seeing how I have seen Jake Glen- Gyllen- uh Hall in other in another thriller that takes place during Thanksgiving called Prisoners, which is a very draining movie both internally and oh, yeah. externally. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Was that with um uh, God, Hugh Jackman? Hugh Jackman. Yes. Yes. So blank out yes. That was a pretty that like not draining in a bad way, but that was like you could you could feel how worn down they were. Yeah. <sighs> But perhaps if you're into this sort of thing, I think you'll find this movie interestingly interesting, especially if you're a fan of the thriller or even horror genre. While probably not timeless, I think it's a pretty interesting film to see nonetheless. What do you guys think? I'm not so sure how it was. Well, I'm not so sure how it was set up with the trailer. Mm. Um, I'm hoping that it's because that was they're they're trying not to show too much. Yeah that they're saving the best for the actual movie Mm -hmm. Um, because there are movies like this like like you said prisoners and gone girl ones that are actually you know the trailer is better really trailer they're they're actually really in depth um versus what the trailers may have led on i guess Mm -hmm. right i'm hoping that's the case here because i might want to see this not in theaters necessarily but at some point I just hope it doesn't have the No Man's Sky uh, effect. If you're wondering what oh, I'm talking God. about, was No Man's Sky was super hyped up in every single one of its trailers. And then when the mm-hmm. game came out, it was a bit of a disappointment. Oh, it was. I remember that. And, you know, because people were expecting so much out of this game when we got nothing in return. I mean, I mean there there are films like that that I've seen, but... You know, I, I I just have nothing. There's really nothing for me to go on about this one with this one. I mean, sure, it's nice, but I don't know. There's just, just a lot we don't know yet from, you know, I guess the Seahawks did a thing. Yeah. But you told me not to pay attention to it, and guess what? You guys are paying attention to it. Well, you should just have because muted I the heard mic. the thing. You should have muted the mic when that happens. Anyway. Don't yell at me. I don't know when it's going to happen. Well, yeah, that's, that's... well, when it does happen, mute the mic. I don't care if you don't know if it's going to happen. Do it when it's going to happen. Do it! Anyway, Nocturnal Animals, it's great. I don't really have much to say about it. It's just a very slow week this week, sadly. There's just not much that I can say about it. Anyway, do you guys want me to move on? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. You ever have that movie where at the very first second it catches your attention and then you realize that it can actually be a very good product ever after seeing the trailer? Well, guess what? We have one of those on our list tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The Edge of Seventeen is a coming-of-age coming of American comedy drama film directed and written by Kelly Freeman Craig. The film stars Haley Steinfeld, Haley Lou Richardson, Hayden, S- Hayden Seto, um, Woody Harrelson, Kyra Sedgwick, and Blake Jenner. No, he's not related to Caitlyn Jenner. Let's move on. I should also mention that the film is produced by James L. Brooks, and if you don't know who that is, he's directed, produced, and written some of the most timeless entertainment venues out there, including Terms of Endearment, Broadcast News, As Good As It Gets, and even TV shows like The Simpsons to this very day. But I'm getting off topic here. Let's look at the plot. The life of a high school junior, Nadine, is already awkward when her all-star older brother, Darian, starts dating her best friend, Krista. Nadine, Nadine now feels more alone than ever until the unexpected friendship with an awkward, thoughtful boy gives her a glimmer of hope that things might not be so terrible after all. Honestly, when looking through the entire trailer, I was more than impressed by it, and I think it's a shame that I didn't even talk about it at all on set. Had we started the season sooner or if I did more research? But thankfully, even throughout all that, I think this is a perfect time to mention that I think we found a hidden gem here. And I certainly hope you all give this film a look if it intrigues you. Keep in mind, the trailer is a Red Band trailer, so for those of you who are not 18 and above, won't be able to watch it. However, nothing that a simple YouTube tube search can't do, right? 
What do you guys think? Um, I, I, I think um, just because of the movie 17 again, I was sort of like, Ugh, I'm not sure how this is going to do. But then I noticed Woody Harrelson in this and I'm like, yes. And uh, his just the one scene where he re- reads her text and then he's like, mm. say something. You need to watch out for run on sentences. I mean, that is, I, I actually laughed at that part. So I think this might actually be a pretty good movie, not just a, you know, dumb, cringeworthy 16, 17 year old drama. I, think mm. this, I agree. It's might will remains to be seen if it's actually a hidden gem, but I think mm. it's, it's mm-hmm. legitimate. What do you think, Naka? Honestly. Like, it's probably going to be a good movie and all, in my opinion. I just don't want to think about 17 right now because, spoiler alert, I am that age. I can buy M-rated games, yet I can't watch, or technically I'm not allowed to watch 18 plus videos on YouTube. So I'm not allowed to, like, enter raffles, yet I could drive myself literally anywhere in the country. So wait, you couldn't watch the trailer? No, I mean I could with my YouTube account, but I mean okay. if I did my YouTube account legitimately, I technically wouldn't have been able to. Ah, I see. But well, I mean, at least we're making progress with yeah, that. Yeah, at least so we're I'm, making so progress. Other than that, other than that particular it happens. Detail, I hope it, it. I hope it does well. I hope it's a good movie. It's. I'll probably look at it in a few years and say, "Wow, this actually was a pretty good movie." Baron, that's confidential. The chat is really slow on this one. No, I'm not too sure if people are watching the actual movie or what. Well, there's eight people watching. It's just like there's not really too much to talk about right now. I suppose, but. I, I suppose the next film that we're going to announce is a lot more interesting. But anyway, The Edge of Seventeen. Naka, what do you think about... Is there anything that struck out to you watching this trailer or no? Or no? Well, other than the fact that 17-year-olds are edgy. <laughs> okay, well, can you... Cool and okay, okay, edgy. Okay, okay. Well, other than that, can you just, you know... No, but it, it looks like it, it'll have a good story. It looks like it has good characters, good humor. I'm okay. not necessarily in the mindset to watch it exactly mm-hmm. right now, but maybe in a couple months. Right. I hope it does good. Anyway. Oh, me too. Oh. I hope it does really good. Anyway, do you want me to move on to our final film of the week? Yes. Okay. Let's do this. Fans of this next film have quite a lot to celebrate for. Ever since the announcement, they were going to make another film based off another book from J.K. Rowling. People in general have been hyped up. Harry Potter has been one of the most successful franchises and arguably the best of the adult Trinity novels, the other two being Twilight and the Hunger Games. I'll let you decide which is second in line. Wink, wink, hint, hint. I think most, if not all of you, plan on seeing this film that I'm announcing either next week or Thanksgiving week. That being said, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is an upcoming British drama drama fantasy uh, action film directed by David Yates and written by J.K. Rowling in her screenwriting debut, inspired by her book of the same name. It stars Eddie Redmayne, Catherine Watterson, Dan Fogler, not the not the Folgers copy, Fogler, Alison Sudol, Colin Farrell, Carmen Ejogo. Uh, Samantha Morton, Ezra Miller, Ron Perlman, John Voight, and Johnny Depp. Wait, Ron Perlman's in this? Nice. Yeah, Ron, Ron Perlman's a good... By the way, Where Ron is Perlman. my goddamn shoe? He mentioned that he was running for president, too. In 2020. Wait, 2020. I would much prefer him over Kanye West, just saying. Yeah. All right, well, I, I, I'd much prefer him over the, pre- over the giant douche that we have running the president right now, but let's not continue. No, Dave Mustaine. The turds in, which... Dave Mustaine. It, Ron Perlman is is an awesome actor, in my opinion, because he's been in like Guillermo del Toro films, and those are gold. But Where anyway, my goddamn shoe. But anyway, a spinoff. The film will be the first installment of a of a two part stage play. Oh wait, no, no, no. I I I do apologize. I read, I read wrong. I get a, I got ahead of myself. Uh, let me repeat that. A spin-off, the film will be the first installment of a series of five films. 
It is intended to be the ninth film installment uh, and the tenth overall, uh, including the two-part stage play *Harry Potter and the Cursed and the Cursed Child* in J.K. Rowling's *Wizarding World*, a new in- entertainment brand and cinematic universe founded by Rowling and, and acquired by Warner Brothers, showcasing different genres and depicting different cultures, time periods, political conflicts, and wars in various wizarding ca- societies around the globe. Based off the measly 128-page book of the same name, Rowling and her screenwriting debut brings us back to the wonderful Wizarding World before Harry Potter, this time taking place in 1926. The film chronicles Newt Newt Scamander, a rival at the Magical Congress of the United States of America for meeting an important official. My God, I cannot read today. Meeting I mean, with an important official. Hey, that's, that's a mouthful right there. Yeah, it's, it's, it is. At this meeting is a magically expanded briefcase which houses a number of dangerous creatures in their habitats. Uh, when the creatures escape from the briefcase, it sends the American Wizarding Authorities in after Newt. The situation threatens to strain even further the state of magical and non-magical relations, which is already in a dangerous place due to the threatening presence of the fanatical New Salem Phil- Philanthropic Society an extremist organization dedicated to the eradication of wizard kind. Newt battles to, to correct the mistake, and the horrors of the resultant increase in violence, fear, and tension felt between magical and non-magical peoples. Guys, as if I even need to go into much detail, this film speaks for itself. There's very little I have to say regarding and recommending it to either my brothers or you guys. It doesn't matter if I was to discuss it on the show or not, you're all going to see this movie. Unless you could care less for Harry Potter, that is. But let's be honest, I've yet to meet one. You're all seeing this movie, hands uh, down, no comparison. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to see this movie or I'm going to be, you know, voted off the island. Everyone wants some Harry Potter action in their life with witches, wizards, spells, creatures of all shapes and sizes, etc. And I'll be seeing this movie right along with you. What do you guys think? I wasn't going to be seeing this movie. Like, I I wasn't even the hottest Harry Potter fan, and I still enjoyed those th- films thoroughly. Yeah. I mean, like, I didn't I didn't enjoy Harry Potter. I, like, read its second book, and... But, I, li- but I liked it. I don't know about you guys, but I liked it. What do you guys think? I did like I like it, too, because... You know, I did not actually read the books, even though... Um, I read a few of them. Yeah, my my. When we I read were, a few when, of them as well. When we were younger, my mom actually read to me and my sister. She read the Deathly Hallows to us, and I liked that. I found the 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 audiobooks no fault to them, but I think that the the reader was kind of had a boring voice. You so mean Jim Dale? Yeah, I, I just. By the I way, just, by the way, guys, I kind of mem- I kind of. No, well. Obviously, Jim Carrey's not going to do a good job reading a dignified novel. But anyway, <laughs> speaking of Jim, speaking of Jim Dale, <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys have heard of this, but there's a YouTube series called Dirty Potter, and oh, it no. is very, very funny, and it's so hilarious by taking clips of Jim Dale's audiobook voice and rearranging it to <laughs> make Sentence and rearranging mixing. it to make a very a very sexual story, and it's oh, hilarious. Was that like sort of like a remix of Harry Potter? And I was like, there was a moment when Voldemort's and I's wand touched. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that was just. I'm like, context, context, <laughs> context. But anyway, what do you think? What do you think, Nako? Well. I've kind of already talked about it. I'm going to go see this movie. And Chris, I'm definitely seeing this because like, keep I don't going. Want to say just because um, I was a fan of Harry Potter. I have seen all the movies, did not read all the books, but I've gotten some of the uh, the story from the books and from the audiobooks too. Um, so I'm I wasn't like overwhelmingly a fan of Harry, Harry uh, of Harry Potter. Like I did, I'm not one of those people. You know, wears around a Gryffindor shirt or anything, even though I am, but I am Ravenclaw because you know, ravens and whatnot. I guess that was just a coincidence. But so anyway, I'm... the um, I I definitely gonna see this because I I I've I, I don't know when this was first announced, but I'm like, um, I I was wondering where they'd go after you know ending, um, Deathly Hallows Part Two. Mm-hmm. And I enjoyed that thoroughly, especially the best parts. Like, not my daughter, you bitch. 
anyway. That was the best part. Yeah, I think I, I'm just gonna say this real quick. I think Harry Potter three is the best Harry Potter film, even though they screwed up the werewolf. But even still, best Harry Potter film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because werewolf. I'm werewolf. So, guys. Uh, I I do apologize, but unfortunately, we are running a little bit low on time, so we're gonna have to speed up uh, through uh, the coming attractions. But don't worry, there's only four of them, and we won't go as fast as you as you were thinking. No. But with that, but with that. Uh, all the films that I announced will be available on November 18th. We'll we'll take a we'll take a few minutes on each coming attraction, and we we'll try to speed up. We we do apologize. We know that you want want us to uh, to keep uh, talking, but unfortunately, we're just running a little bit low on time this 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 time. Uh, but anyway, uh, okay, all right. Well, uh, wait. What what happened? Like, um, could you? Well, could you could you hold on, please? I I am typing something uh, real quick to someone. Holding. Uh, there is not a time limit. It's just some stuff. Okay. Okay, well, yeah, all right. Yeah, we do apologize, people. Um, we're not going to go as fast, but we are going to go a little faster. But anyway, with that being said, we only have fat. We only have four coming attractions. So, with that being said, Solace, what do you guys think about this film? Now, this, um, I liked the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's, what's what's this yeah. actor's name? Um, but the coming attraction on the sorry, chat. Sorry, sure. sorry, 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 sorry. Now remind me of this actor's name because I know him. Who's uh, Colin us. Farrell? Colin yeah. Farrell. Yeah, he was um, Hannibal Lecter <laughs> in Silence of the Lambs. I believe, or at least he was the guy. Yeah, I don't. I'm thinking too much into it, but I think he. Uh, I, I like how this works like they're sort of trying to delve into this mystery and the solace this the not the solace or the main characters like um Holy he's like crap. i can see you can see things you can sort of bible somewhat verse? clairvoyant somewhat clairvoyant i don't know no it's the exact time he knew the exact time we would arrive something like that i think that's really cool and yeah i was referencing the i think it was verizon social half fast speed half fast and then there's also shit my pants but anyway, but anyway your pants right what do you here. think about this film Naka? uh i got a little confused about the trailer but i can see where this film is going and like it's got a little bit of a like a little bit of a darker overtone that uh, i probably phrased that wrong but it's definitely it's definitely going to be interesting with like the FBI and the SWAT team coming in for this crime, murder, whatever. But mm-hmm. uh, it looks good. I like it. Yeah, I, I kind of want to see what it's gonna gonna go with, you know, because with the like the mastermind knowing exactly what time the FBI would have arrived, I think it's an interesting case. But other than that, that's really all I have to say about it. And I think we'll talk about it more. But do you want me to move on? Yeah. Sure. All right. Kong Skull Island. Oh, um, got shit Samuel on me. L. Jackson, John Goodman. Who else? You got a bunch of other good actors. I'm sorry to say, I'm not a big fan of King Kong. Like That's in all right. general, like oh, I, 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 I guess you can call it a bad experience, if you will. But I suppose that there was just a lot of problems with Peter Jackson's edition of King Kong. And I just didn't like it. I wanted to see other films besides that one. The only thing that I liked was the insect pit scene with the music playing. And that was actually a really good scene to play. But other than that, there are flaws in Peter Jackson's King Kong. And with this film, I guess you can say it could do better than 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 either of those two films. Either the original 1930s film or Peter Jackson's version. But as for this film... Uh, it takes a bit. I mean, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, motherfucker. I, I'm sorry, I don't like King Kong. I just can't. But Samuel L. Jackson could save Cruise. it. 
let him speak. Yeah. But he could save it. Okay, okay. Maybe he could save it, but that doesn't excuse for how much of a... I don't even think the film's going to even be that good. It's taken the Avatar approach to it. Kind of. Yeah. Really? There's... That's all I can see it as. It's taking the Avatar, not the last Airbender. We don't talk about that. But it's like this no. planet is the Oh, oh you, you, need to you, save you're, it. you're talking about the original cartoon, right? No, I was... Of the last... No, what Of I the was, last Airbender, right? I was talking about Peter Jet... Like, the one that came out with, like, the blue cat people. Oh. Yeah, that film. The CGI cat people. Yeah, yes. I forgot. I was talking that approach where, like, we need to save the trees and everything. That's really all no. that I got from this, but with King Kong instead of, you know, on a different planet with, uh, unobtainium. God, that's such a stupid... Such a stupid-ass name. Yeah. Unobtainium. Because it's unobtained. Apes on the motherfucking skyscraper. <laughs> I would love to hear that. Yes, James Cameron's not Peter Jackson, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, James Cameron. Yeah. But Guys, I, I... forget it. Just make another Terminator already. Yeah. I do have hope for this. Cody, movie. don't start with me. Anyway. Cody, Cody, you're opening up a vat of worms there, my friend. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, people keep bringing up Harambe. It's Can annoying. We not anyway, it's like I love like yes, I put this in the chat. You. It's um, how did we let these two clowns run for president? Coming from a country that is in a six months of mourning for a gorilla. Okay. Anyway, yeah. let's move on. Let's move and on to this. Why? Shit. Hey, Cruz. What? Because the world is round. It turns me on. Anyway, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. What do you guys think of this one? This is from the director of The Fifth Element. It's got space. It's so pretty. Uh, it, it looks really good. It, it's not as... It's sort of a comic book movie because it's based off a comic. But mm -hmm. I hope it does well. It looks pretty. It has I Dane DeHaan. It. I will go see it. it. Dane DeHaan looks amazing in this film. What do you think, Cruz? Dana Han. I think. Uh, Sorry. Ow! Ow! Yeah, mute, 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 please. Ow. Anyway, what do you think, Cruz? Ow! I think I like the whole um, almost Mario Galaxy kind of thing you get from it, like with the floating giant fish or whatever. They're floating around the buildings. Mm -hmm. and they're not balloons, they're actual do, fish. Do, 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 I think do, that, do. Kind of, that kind of uh, environment looks really cool. It's almost like uh, what, to like Total Recall kind mm. of environment but much better i totally concur with that anyway uh yeah that's really all i have to say of, mm -hmm. of valerian and the city of a thousand planets not much has been revealed sadly no. um i i i mean like i'm looking at it and even the title screen kind of looks like a little generic in my opinion but that isn't to say the film won't be bad but who knows from the director of the fifth element i'm not too sure if any of you saw that but you, and if you do you totally deserve to see it oh yeah i saw the fifth element do you like it yeah who doesn't like the no. fifth element hmm. anyway Speaking well of the uh, fifth let's, element <laughs> ish let's move on let's move on to our last coming attraction of the day ghost in the shell now this film has conjured up a lot of controversy and i do mean that in a negative way when the first screenshot of Scarlett Johansson's, uh, you know, character showed up in 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 this film, America America was literally just flabbergasted triggered. with the triggered with the whitewashing pandemic, and pandemic because they didn't see an Asian actress play the character. But do you want to know who wasn't offended? Japan, the guy yeah. who created it. Yeah, yeah. They, they <laughs> actually think Scarlett Johansson is actually, you know, yeah. They were like, I think they were the ones who were okay with it. Yeah, so, yeah. It's people getting. It's this is what I. It, what one thing that pisses me off, it's like people silly... getting, uh, people getting offended on someone else's behalf, even when that person is not offended. It's like, what, what, where do you? You have to be a fucking apologist. Well, I mean, it's part of the. It's up. it's part of the reason why people didn't want to put pee pee. Uh, pee what the fuck am I saying? Pee -pee. People, people, 
people. P A P. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Please. People, people didn't want. Uh, the people who were running Warner Brothers wanted to take Speedy Gonzalez off the Looney Tunes uh, lineup. Assholes. Because because they because they thought it thought he was too offensive because they were stereotyping Mexicans. Guess who weren't offensive? Mexicans. Fucking Mexicans. Yeah. They yeah, they thought Speedy Gonzalez was fine. Why didn't yeah, they you know who's offended? These like white SJW liberal fruitcakes. There we go. Moving yes. on. Pretty much. That's yeah. take the words out of my mouth. I'm gonna go on a rant for two hours about these people, so it's it's you, better you know that these, we move you on. Know, you've probably seen these people before, especially that that oh my god, this is a fucking joke. The person like I have PTSD oh from being a feminist on the internet. It's like no, you fucking don't. You know how you prevent, you, how you would that is all. You know yeah. how you, you know how you would prevent that? Close the laptop. Stop being a dumbass. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. What do you guys think? What do you guys think of Ghost in the Shell, though? Like literally, because I actually. Oh, um, it's so pretty. Believe, I'm getting a few mixed believe, signals on the plot. Sorry. But anyway, believe it or not, the director of the original animation films actually mm -hmm. came on the set to to meet with Scarlett Johansson, and he thinks uh, Scarlett Johansson's gonna, gonna do a good a good job. She did a great job in the trailer. Yeah, I mean. Are you excited for this film? Because I sure as hell am. It looks pretty. Oh cool. yeah. It's kind of like um, uh, what do I want to say? Sort of like a mix of Oblivion, um, Selfless, mm -hmm. and almost Evil Within too, with the, the um, sort of being in a dream, hooked up to a thing and being in a dream state. Like, Inception. What do you call it? Not quite like well, a little more brutal than that. Like <laughs> people were eating. They were in, yeah, in these tubs, and they had like something hooked up to their brain that was all connected to a central that right. was connected to this guy, the villain's brain, and so they were all in his world. Mm -hmm. it's like it, the part where it was like, um, you see all these people connect, hooked up to the thing. It's like your life wasn't saved; it was stolen. That I thought was pretty cool, and trippy. But yeah, I I'm totally excited for Ghosts in the Shell, and um... I want it. Yeah, I actually do want to see it. Uh, and for and I'm sorry for saying th that particular word. I meant to say, you know, you know the other the other term. I didn't mean that in a offensive way. I should have said freaking Mexicans because that would have been a lot better. But anyway, that's all I have to. That is really all I have to say regarding this particular this particular trailer and. Uh, that is it for our show, ladies and gentlemen. It's been nice uh, talking with you guys. We hope to see you mm -hmm. again. A little bit um, of a shorter show, but yeah, a little bit of a shorter show. We have next, a we next have time something. We're gonna have a double. Yeah, we're ha well, we're yeah, we're double. gonna have a yeah, we're having a double next week. Anyway, guys, uh, this is Subwoofer for Entertainment Treehouse. My name is Scarfy. I'm Naka, and I am Cruz. And you have yourselves a wonderful night. Oh yeah, everybody yeah. stay. Stay warm, stay classy, don't burn down the house. Yeah, please don't. Burning down the house. Alright, goodbye everybody. <laughs>